Ah, hello, Dinky Doo. A very good evening to you. It's me, Scotty McClure. And we are, of course, live on Facebook Live. That is the big one, the one everyone's talking about and the one everyone is listening to. Welcome, 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 I say. Lovely to have you with us, of course. One hour of superb scintillating information, education, and entertainment for not just one nation, but every nation across the globe. This is a global talk show, and I am Scotty McClue, the world's top broadcaster. Dinky do to you, and a very warm welcome. Andy Grant's watching, Andy McCrory, Ali Haining, Mark Cruden, Stephen Wright, Julianne Scott, Andy Grant, Andy McCrory, good evening, evening bosses, Mark, Dinky do, Scotty, Dinky do to all of you, Giuseppe Bacchetti is watching us tonight, and a very, very warm welcome. Now, guys, evening boss, evening to you. Good morning from the southern highlands of New South Wales and Australia, says Ali Haining. How tremendous is that? Wadge is, is watching. Hi, Scotty, from Ben Lucas. Dinky do, Ben, and thank you so much for all your generosity on the GoFundMe.com forward slash Scotty hyphen McClue page. Historic Hamilton loves you, Scotty, says Gary Lee. Angela Goodlooks watching. Dinky do, Angela. Lovely to have you with us. Keep sharing, guys. Let everybody know you're watching Scotty McClue. Type it in and say, I'm watching Scotty McClue. Dinky do, just for you, live on Facebook Live. Now, hi from Bonnie Bridge in Scotland. Ian Walker's watching. Neil Mills. Dinky do. Angie Thompson. Dinky do to you, Angela. I'm glad you can all get it tonight. That's fantastic. Normally we get a raft of people saying, oh, it's not working, it's not working. It is working from here. I can tell you that tonight. So you should be getting it loud and clear. Now, I don't know if you saw the leaders' debate on BBC television tonight. But uh, we can discuss that. Also, I'd like to say, would the north of England like to join an independent Scotland? I think that would be fantastic. A lot of these politics uh, programs, they just go round and round the houses. And uh, I would quite like to chair one of these debates myself and keep these people on track and try and pin them down to exactitudes. So there we are. That's what I would like to do. Working perfect, says Mark. Thanks. Dinky do from Lee Barkinshaw. Dinky do to you. You need to get a radio station. Get your phone in going again. Like Scott FM, says Gordon Jimison. But Gordon, can you believe it? Radio figures came out this week for the radio industry. It's called RAJAR. R-A-J-A-R. The Radio Joint Audience Research. And um, <clears throat> it's very interesting. A lot of my old stations have absolutely plummeted. Now, I've spoken to these people and said, do you want the Scotty McClure phone in? They went, mm, well, uh, it's, it's, it's kind of, it's been before, you know, and you say, yes, but it was very, very, very successful. And it would build up your audience. But do you realize that I get more audience on social media than some of these stations get in a week? I get it on one video, right? Uh, one of the videos I noticed had 10,000 people had viewed it. Just a tiny Facebook video, 10,000 people had viewed it. Now, uh, there's a station down south, huge station, massive, massive population it covers. It's got 10,000 listeners a week. So it's just to show you just how big and powerful social media is. And although it would be nice to say Scotty McClure should have a big radio station for the phone in, I think it's very important we realize just how powerful Facebook Live is, Periscope is, YouTube is, LinkedIn is, all these marvelous, marvelous platforms that can cope with a, a global program like this. How many radio stations do you know that you can uh, get people from Australia and America watching? Evening, Scotty. What's on the agenda tonight is uh, Neil Mills. Neil, we're discussing if Scotland went independent, would the north of England, now that's the northeast, Newcastle and Hartlepool and Sunderland and Durham, would they all come with us? Would Carlisle and Lancaster and Preston come with us? Would Liverpool and Manchester and Leeds come with us? I spoke about this on a talk radio station in Liverpool nine years ago, and everybody laughed, of course. You do laugh at Scotty McClure, as I say. I didn't realize I was funny, but, you know, that's why I gave up comedy. Everybody just laughed at me all the time. But if you listen, I will give you the truth. You won't have any contrived nonsense. 
Scotty, nothing's changed since 1820 when the Scots didn't have a voice. Some declared UDI in Glasgow. Back then they got charged with treason and put to death. They were called radicals. Yes, absolutely. Buns and the radicals in Dumfries chasing each other down the road and all that sort of thing. But you need to put a stop to this vice-like grip. And the only reason Westminster's got a vice-like grip on Scotland is no reason. Because Scotland subsidises it to the tune of £40 billion. Every time I get in a taxi, it's either football talk shows or the same music all the time, says Angie. I know it's very, very dull. So the radio stations have learned that they're going down the wrong road. Now, I know why they're doing this. They're hoping to get a young audience. They won't. I can tell you that. I remember the television companies going live through the night and they thought, yeah, we get the young people, you know, having a few beers, that sort of thing. And of course, they didn't. They got the very elderly who couldn't sleep. So they would have been better putting on, uh, you know, films from the 30s, 40s, 50s and 60s. Scotty's live now, says Josh Mullen, dinky-doo, drinking Ovaltine, Scotty, it's lovely. I just did a wee advert. Good night, Ovaltinis, remember that one with the centre party? Chris Max watching dinky-doo. Now, what did you think of the leaders' debate? I've got my Skype open right now, Scotty dot mcclue if you've got a skype and you want to ring into the program feel free to do so it's not a problem um now who have we got here you could always do both facebook and radio reach as many people as possible oh absolutely if you're doing a radio station now you would have facebook and you would have periscope i sometimes watch nigel farage i don't necessarily agree with his politics obviously but, um, you know, I sometimes watch him on uh, LBC and, uh, you know, it's uh, he's, he's on Facebook and Periscope and you can see him there and join him. You can't beat listening to the wireless, says Neil, Mains, Neil Mills Jr. Right. Sorry about that, Neil. Uh, Gone Sterling McClure, you're huge with the soap factory workers on Barra. Hello to the soap factory workers on Barra. Lovely to have you with us. And dinky-doo to all of you up there in Castle Bay and the surrounding area. Lovely to have you with us. McBrain's for the Highlands, I say. Uh, good. At last, that's me back on, says George. I believe the audience was handpicked to cause argument. Same with all these debates. I have done these chat shows, and they're very strict with you, telling you what you can uh, ask. If you're, you say, oh, excuse me, are you asking a question tonight? Could you come with us? All the rest of it. And I made a couple of comments, but as soon as the cameras clock, it's McClue. They usually tighten right in and say, McClue's there, just watch him. You don't have to watch me at all, for goodness sake. What a laugh. Sadly, most of Scottish is owned by big groups and networks at large. Sean Moore, you're quite right. I heard tonight that Scottish railways tend to be owned by the Dutch. So there you go. Now, if you had an independent Scotland, you'd take that back into Scottish public ownership and run the railways from here and get the revenue. Uh, and apparently Britain is known as Treasure Island to all these foreign companies. They come and soak us dry. I think if you're uh, making money in Scotland, you should then be accounting in Scotland. That's what you should be doing. Uh, so there you are. Sadly, most of the Scottish stations are owned by big groups and network at large. Yes, Sean, absolutely, because people sold out, so you don't any longer have that Scottish thing. I tried it myself, and the radio station would have been very, very, very successful, but we had a stewardship issue with, uh, with a member of the management, and that became something of a problem, and we had to wrap it in. So there you are, but that would have been very, very successful. Um, I worked in radio and judge your shows by response on phone-ins and messages. Yes, absolutely. Well, if you think about it, I could maybe get 750,000 people listening a week on a 2.5 million TSA transmission survey area. So there you go. So there's no problem with getting the audience. I think what happens is... You're going cheaper and cheaper and cheaper with your employees, so you've got programmers that can uh, put in songs to a computer, but they would panic about the idea of a talk show. They don't understand it. Uh, so there you are. Also, uh, you could do the Daily Report live on YouTube, the same as Brian Gerrish in the UK column channel. Yes, well, that's going to happen if every single one of you 
make a note of this, guys. You might not want to do it now. But if every single one of you wants to go to YouTube, put in Scotty McClue channel and subscribe. Now, I only need about 145 of you to do that. So if 145 of you, scribble a wee note beside you just now, must subscribe to Scotty McClue on YouTube, the Scotty McClue YouTube channel. Subscribe. If we get a 1,000 subs, then I can use that as a broadcast platform and I can broadcast to you from there. So can you do that? Let's do it tonight. Let's say you only need 145 people. Let's 145 of us do that tonight. Subscribe to Scotty McClue on YouTube, right? And you'll see there's about 240 videos for your edification, education, and delight up on the Scotty McClure YouTube channel. Scotty, how about Pirate Radio? We could club together and buy you a rowing boat and anchor off a drossin. Have you ever been off a drossin in a storm? Have you ever seen the Aran boat taking a drossin pier in a storm? These captains, never mind giving MBEs and OBEs and knighthoods to all and sundry, somebody who's maybe flashed their top story in the front page of a red top tabloid or something like that. And the next thing, they're getting decorated. What I would say, give the captains of the coastal ships, they should be knighted. Yeah? I mean, you imagine trying to take Scarinish Pier in the pitch dark in a stormy winter's night. How brave is that? There's a big painting, I think it may have been in the Bank of Scotland boardroom or something, it's called No Call at Call. And it's one of the big Hall Russell ferries that came out in 1964. Um, the Klansmen, the Columba, and the Hebrides. And I think the Columba is now known as the Hebridean Princess. And uh, you can see her trying to take the pier at call, and it's just too stormy. Uh, so there we go. That's what we're talking about. Done it already, Scotty, says Neil Mills Jr. Neil Mills Jr., you are a gentleman. I thank you for that. You have subscribed to me on YouTube. If another 144 of you do that, we are in clover big time. Scotty, you've got a wee red dot in your left eye. So there we are. A wee red dot in my left eye. It must just be a reflection, I would have thought. Let me just see. I'll just have a quick look here and see what it is. We red dot in my left eye. No, I don't see it. I keep a I keep a little reflection here so I can a admire myself, obviously, because the doctor said to me I wasn't to get any shocks, so I had to have the mirror sticking out the house. Uh, Dinky do to you and all the roaders, says Andy Grant. No need to bribe YouTube and subscribe, Scotty McClue. It's for you. Fantastic. It's made for you. I thank you. LOL, says Ian Walker. Dinky do to you, Ian Walker. Tremendous stuff. LOL to you as well. And um, <clears throat> lots and lots happening. Now, can I explain to you what we're talking about tonight? We're very, very tight for time. So little time to chat and uh, so much to discuss. If we have an independent Scotland, then there's Erica. Good morning from Australia. Good morning to you, Erica. Guys, if you're coming on, do let me know where you're watching. Uh, fantastic stuff. Evening, Scotty. Hope you're good. Can say as well done to Brendan Rogers and Celtic for doing an undefeated season and record. Tell me, George Raffin, hope he's feeling okay. He's not been too well. So, George Raffin, dinky do to you. Hello, Scotty. You're looking stunning, says Rab Hill. I thank you, Rab Hill. Dinky do to you. I'm just going to have a, a wee sip of tea. Mm -hmm. A bucket of tea for you. Very, very good. I don't know my C's the day mug tonight. Now, can we have a share point? Share, 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 share. Lovely little poem I've got for you tonight. Isn't it strange that princes and kings and those who fly on outstretched wings and ordinary folk like you and me are makers of eternity? For each is given a book of rules, an hourglass and a bag of tools, each to create our time has flown, a stumbling block or a stepping stone. Do you like that one? I thought you'd like that. So there you are, just a wee one for you. 
And um, whatever happened to Rabsy Nisbet? Rabsy, the wonderful Gregor Fisher. What a superb actor that guy is. I mean, the number of things he's done. You see him in so many things. Tremendous. Um, I would like a wee part before my time is up in a, in a drama or a film or a movie. Something like that. Should I play a goodie or should I play a baddie? That's what we have to decide. Uh, already shared, says Wadge, stinky do. Scotty, we can't get the people of the Scottish borders to vote for independence. They are quizlings. Uh, so, you know, you need to have a word with them. Well, I think anybody that doesn't vote for independence is not voting through fear and through ignorance. They haven't actually known what's happened. They've fallen for all the rubbish that gets um, you know, printed and broadcast by mainstream media. That's why you should go fund Scotty McClue. Go to gofundme.com forward slash Scotty hyphen McClue. Stick in a fiver. You're not going to miss a fiver or a tenner. Stick that in and we'll build a media for you that is non-biased, without agendas. So there you are. Um, you can be the, the next Doctor's Companion in Doctor Who. I think so, actually. I think I should. Be. Or what about the Doctor? Woo! There we are. Scotty McClue is Doctor Who. Could you imagine seeing the headlines now? Good evening, Scotty. Get yourself on River City, says the wonderful Daniel Joseph. Good evening to you, Daniel Joseph, and Dinky Do, I say. And thank you for everything you do for so many people, helping everyone out. Great guy. Uh, I think you should make a cameo on Still Game. I think so, actually. I was thinking today, a lot of the still game stuff chimes with me. You know, the songs and the, the fun and the nonsense. There we are. Scarlet's new man in River City, says George Mullen. I've actually had the privilege of meeting Scarlet. What a tremendous lady. Superb actress as well. Absolutely. Uh, EastEnders, Scotty. Whoa, EastEnders. What? I want to come in. So what's going on here, then? What are you saying to me, Scotty McClue? All that stuff, wonderful, isn't it? Um, I, Alex and Still Game, Isa's long lost brother. <laughs> Fantastic, there we go. Yes, right, discussion, guys. What did we think of the debate tonight? Did you see the leaders' debate? Do you know what just occurred to me? Ruth Davidson was attacking... Nicola Sturgeon. And David Coburn, the UKIP guy, was attacking Nicola Sturgeon. And I thought they shouldn't be attacking Nicola Sturgeon. Ruth Davidson should actually be apologising for what the Tories have done to this country since 1979. The suffering and the devastation that has been caused. Margaret Thatcher, the lives that woman ruined. The absolute dreadful, dreadful suffering. The suffering of austerity. Not being able to feed your own children because of conservative policies. So instead of attacking, I think, and I might even get her some votes, if... Uh, both Ruth Davidson and Theresa May ate a little bit of humble pie and said, we're very, very, very sorry for what we've done in the past. And we'll try not to do it in the future. Something like that. Just a wee bit of humility goes a long way. Scotty McClure, as you know, is a great man for humility. Right, uh, still game, should have given up the game years ago, says Robert Bain. I don't know. Mr. Scotty, what channel was it on? Neil Mills, it was on uh, BBC One, or BBC Scotland, and it was chaired by Sarah Smith, John Smith's daughter, who is uh, the political editor for BBC Scotland, I think, if I've got that right. Uh, Kezia called, st called Sturgeon out telling porkies. Sandy, Nicola Sturgeon has never, ever, ever told a porky in her life, as far as I know. Certainly not in her public life. So, Sandy, what you should be doing is getting behind Nicola Sturgeon and giving her your support and saying, I know the Labour mob, they, they caused a problem, they mucked it up, they didn't back independence, they're out the game, but... 
I would like to support Nicola Sturgeon because I am a Scot. That's where you should be coming from, Sandy. I don't know who to vote for. Whoever's in charge, they all mess up. Just some are better than others. Well, there you go. Sounded like Arthur Mullard then. Arthur Mullard. Yeah, remember Arthur? No problem. Uh, are you on the money? You are on the money, Scotty McClure. The Tories are a disgrace. They're proposing to reintroduce fox hunting and ban school dinners. The fox hunting I have no time for at all. What I would do is, why don't they send a few uh, a few Tories out and then uh, send the hounds out? You know, that sort of thing. So, uh, you know, tie, a, tie an aniseed bag uh, to the Tories and say, right, you better run, chum. That sort of thing. You know, Sandy... Labour say vote Tory. What kind of party are they? SNP all the way, says Shug McGinty. Well, as you know, we're not a political programme. I'm not a political animal, but I am an economic animal. And uh, the economics make complete sense for an independent Scotland. So there you are. When people say, you know, what would you do about not having the financial leg up from Westminster? We give Westminster the financial leg up to the tune of £40 billion. Pounds. So, Sandy, you'd have a much better quality of life supporting an independent Scotland. Do I vote or not? Lee Birkinshaw says, always vote, Lee. People died to get the vote. A suffragette flung herself under the King's horse eh, on Derby Day to get the vote for people. So I think it would be so disrespectful to those who have gone before us. Uh, I think you're Nicola Sturgeon wearing a Scotty McClue suit says Robert Bean. <laughs> what a privilege that would be. Um, no, I'm afraid I would have to lose a little bit of weight uh, to have the hourglass figure. Uh, in days gone by, listening to Scotty McClure and Scott FM and Real Radio to Happy Times, lots of laughs too. I think you miss it. And uh, talk a lot of P as well. Well, thank you very much. Very, very nice. Uh, well, of course, uh, one doesn't want somebody who just happens to be the new programmer of a radio station or a television station deciding whether Scotty McClue broadcasts or not, I decide if Scotty McClue broadcasts or not. Not somebody with a little bit of bum fluff round their face going, I don't think you should broadcast now because we're trying to get a younger audience. You won't get them. The younger audience follows Scotty McClue. And they always remember at a radio conference I was just about to start a talk that I was giving and I looked up at the back and there was the controller of BBC Radio 1 coming in the door and sitting down, delightful guy, and I thought to myself, what on earth is he doing coming to see Scotty McClue, who's a talk show man, late night radio in Scotland or the northwest and northeast of England and the Midlands and Yorkshire, and of course they realised that Scotty McClure gets a massive, massive following of young people because people like to hear the discussion. Uh, it's cheap booze they want to get rid of, not school dinners. Imagine taking the food out of children's mouths. Ooh. And the smokers have been hit hard. No more ten fags or wee backy packets. I don't mind if they banned the fags altogether. I wouldn't mind that. I think every smoker should really give up. Ha ha ha! So too, Scotty, you know best. Scotty, will we ever get honest politicians? Well, I haven't gone into politics. I've been invited to go into politics. I've been pleaded with to go into politics and what have you, but I haven't gone into politics as yet because I can't be bothered with the dishonesty. There's nothing to stop telling people the truth and saying, here's what we're doing about it. Okay. Um, hello, says Barry Humphreys. Dinky do, Barry. Dinky do to you. Love your uh, love your stuff. Uh, Joanne Menes is watching. Joanne Menzies. There we are, did we say. How do I choose who to vote for? Please help, Scotty. Most of them tell fibs just to get votes and never deliver. Well, the thing is, what I've noticed about the present Scottish government, they've always delivered. And anything that falls a little bit short, Scotland has never been so well run. And both Alex Salmond and Nicola Sturgeon as politicians and people are just different class. Different class. So there you go. And the empty arrogance 
of Southern-based conservatives. I'm sorry, I can't see it. I mean, I used to support that. I used to support the uh, the old-fashioned style of patrician conservative. You'll remember me doing it. I used to be a great one for the Union, but it's now been damaged by people of unprecedented greed who will not listen. They will not take a telling. And everybody has to take a telling now and again. Um, my stuff is to be loved. How are you doing, Scotty? Says Greg Connor, didn't you do? I don't vote and I'm hated for it, Roy. You should never ever be hated. You're a fantastic guy. Why should anyone ever hate you? Never ever hate anything, guys. If you hate something, you're shutting off an avenue of learning. So ban the word hate from your vocabulary as of now. Right. Good evening, Scotty, says Joanne. Good evening to you, my love. Yes, says Barry Humphreys. Yes to an independent Scotland. Scotty, I think you should run Scotland, says Greg Connor. Well, I would certainly sit in on the top meetings and uh, give them the benefit of my largesse and advice. I mean, I do do media advising to very, very senior people. I never, ever advertise. I don't say who they are, but that's what I do. So if you ever want to be big in the media or handle a media problem, you could do uh, an awful lot worse than get a hold of me and I'll sort it for you. I've only got the 40 years experience. I've only got 33 years of broadcasting live. I've only got 25 years of 36,000 hours of unscripted broadcasting live. But it's all there. Um, <clears throat> Barry Humphreys, is that not Dame Edna? Says George Mullen. Yes, Dame Edna. And the other one that, uh, that Barry Humphreys does, Sir Les Patterson. So there you go. <laughs> I remember being at a party. And we'd had a light refreshment. And somebody said, oh, here, Liz Patterson's arrived. I thought, thank you. There we are. Uh, Scotland programme again tonight, uh, says Steve Burrows. Yes, Steve, we're talking about everything as well. We're only mentioning Scotland. So if you've got something you want to discuss that affects the north of England, we're actually discussing that tonight. Excuse me a wee second. Just while I um, have a wee moment. Oh, oh. Just that. Uh, that's better. Giving myself a quick knock down there, loves, because it's roasting in this studio tonight. Scotty, you're the best PR in Scotland, says Gary Lee. Yes, if you need public relations or media training or drama training or speaking training, because I am an international public speaker. Inspirational stuff, of course. I give you all that. How's the Doug Scotty, says Greg Connor. The Doug is absolutely beautiful. He's in his 11th year. He had a little fibrocartilaginous embolism about six years ago. So he walks a little bit like the late Douglas Bader, Sir Douglas Bader. But he's a wonderful, wonderful dog. Absolutely adore him. Take the bonnet off. That's how you're roasting. No, I can't take the bonnet off because you'd think I was losing my hair. Oh, we don't want that. Actually, got one for you tonight. You're a class guy, Scotty. You don't hold back class, says Rab Hill. We just, I was reading that a male is by birth and a man is by age, but a gentleman is by decision. So there you are. But I was very, very fortunate. I had a lovely, lovely father, so I was actually born a gentleman. So there you are. So, so I came out of the womb in a fine tweed suit and a pair of nice, uh, nice uh, Chuck's brogues. So there you go. Funny story for you, Scotty. Scotty, contact you later. There's an issue I'd like to get a bit of awareness, says Gordon Robertson. Listen, I am one of the most trusted people in the world, guys. And if somebody tells me something highly confidential, I've been very, very privileged over the years to, um, to, to be party to very, very high-powered information because people trust me. Now, I will say to them, if you don't want to hear this back, then you never, ever will. If you want it round the world, I shall have it round the world by lunchtime. So there you go. That's what Scotty McClure's about. Scotty, we used to be part of Northumberland. Absolutely. And the Geordies are really Scots. They used to say the Geordies were Scots. But we know brains, that sort of thing, Sunday. So the borders 
should really want to become part of Scotland. That's what I'd say. Uh, funny story, yes. Scotty, what do you think of historic Hamilton? Wonderful, wonderful stuff. Anything to do with history. If you're studying history, then you know where you've come from. That can give you a handle on where you are and allow you to plan on where you are going. So there you go. A uh, pal of mine always wore a cowboy hat in a motorcycle accident, a serious one, uh, and I went in to see him in the hospital on the bed. He was sitting there with the cowboy hat on. Absolutely amazing. I remember a guy woke up with a cowboy hat in hospital. He said, what's all this about? And somebody said, you're in the Western. Uh, hi, pal, says uh, Greg Connor, dinky do. Now, guys, if you're feeling flush tonight, you've got a spare fiver. Go to GoFundMe.com after this program, forward slash Scotty hyphen McClure, and shove it in there, can you? Just get your wee plastic debit card, stick in a fiver, I say thank you, thank you, thank you. We're at 400 quid. Scotty, in this time of forced austerity, uh, I was sick to see the pictures of the elitist society wedding. No, Ian. Drop this big chip off your shoulder, or should I say fish supper, on your shoulder, right? It doesn't matter how much money somebody else is spending. It's what you're spending and what people are spending on you. For instance, I've had this discussion with millions of people over the years. When I say millions, millions used to listen to the programs, and now they still do. We're up to, by the way... Uh, half a million people have, are aware of uh, the Facebook videos. So just to let you know, fantastic. Um, the Declaration of Independence tells us we come from the back of Syria, Scotty. Actually, Sandy, you're from the African Rift Valley, son. That's where you're from. So there's no such thing as indigenous people. You are from the African Rift Valley via Ireland. You are now a Scot, and you could be an independent Scot, and clean up. Hi, Scotty. Stop, top man's a Stephen McMahon. Uh, fantastic. Religion is stopping our independence, Scotty. People need to wake up. Religion has never, ever, ever, ever caused a problem in the world, Ian. What causes a problem is a lack of knowledge and understanding about religion. That's what causes the problem in the world, not religion itself. If you've got an understanding of someone else's religion, if you know about the four pillars of Islam, if you know about Judaism, if you know about Hinduism, if you know about Christianity, all denominations, Catholicism, Protestantism, if you understand all the world's great religions, you'll never, ever, ever have a problem with it. And you'll never, ever have a problem with racism because there's only one race, the human race, you and me. So there we go, Ma. Uh, they weren't interested in the wedding or the dress. The press were more interested in her arms, says Angie Thompson. Did you see the clip of Ian Duncan Smith getting a hard time? No, but I shall watch it. I would relish that. Um, I'm from Earth, Scotty. One planet, that's all we've got. John Paul Preston. I've never heard so much sense talked in all my life. Oops, can we have a share point, loves? Share, 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 share. Get sharing now. Type in as well. Type, type, typey, type. I'm watching Scotty McClure on Facebook Live. Right click on my page and include it in the link. Get everybody on here. Fantastic. Law, religion causes all problems. Ian Walker, it does not. I have just told you. Will you listen to Scotty McClue? Will you take a telling, please? Scotty knows best. Right, would you say most of the politicians lie, Scotty? Let's just say they occasionally misconstrue the truth. Let's just say they can on occasion be economical with the truth. Lie is a very strong word, and it's a word like nice. It doesn't have a specific meaning. But misconstruing the truth most certainly does. <clears throat> so there you go. I've never got a spare fiver as the wife dips my pockets. Have a laugh and have a rant. Scotty, have you ever seen a flying saucer? Just as the missus is a wee bit upset. But it's a very rare occasion. You just have to duck and get out the road. Turns out that the nurse in, in the audience at the leaders' debate is married to 
a Tory councillor. The BBC is keeping Scotland down. Well, yes, of course the BBC wants to keep Scotland down. Wendy uh, MacDonald Thompson, what a beautiful name, Wendy MacDonald Thompson. Of course the BBC, remember the BBC has huge interests in remaining in Scotland. If the BBC gets hunted out of Scotland, they lose £325 million. Pounds. So that's why it's in the BBC's interest that Scotland doesn't become independent. Because if Scotland becomes independent, which it will do, then the BBC could get hunted out of Scotland because they are British. And remember, there's no such country as Britain. So you're only amalgam of the four countries, an amalgamation of four countries. Scotland, England, Northern Ireland, which is actually a province, it's not actually a country, the annexation of the six counties. And remember, Ireland may reunify in the future and become the Emerald Isle completely again. My lad's obsessed with aliens. He thinks there's summit out there. And then he said, what if there were aliens and they invaded the planet? What's your thoughts on that? God bless you, my son, says Ian Walker. And to you, in nomine patris et fili et spiriti sanctus. The Mass has ended. Go in peace. So there you are. Uh, just chagged you in that clip, says George Mullen. Thanks for that, George. Appreciate it. Andrew McDonald's watching. Dinky do to you, Andrew McDonald. Welcome, 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 all comers, I say. Can you get sharing, guys, and share all week? It's lovely, as I say, it says 144 people have liked your video. But I'd love to see you share. So get that word going. If you see anything with Scotty McClure on it, just share it. Because it'll be absolutely fine. Um, so welcome, welcome, welcome. Hey, Scotty, says Justin Scott. Now, in answer to your aliens, I can remember when we were doing the late night phone in on Scott FM. And a guy came on and he said, I've seen a flying saucer uh, Scotty and I've seen a UFO alright I don't think he was being rude when he said that uh, so he said I've seen a UFO and uh, I said where did you see this and he said uh, I think it was the back road to Lugton from Kilburnley or something and I must confess <coughs> pardon me we sip of tea dears mm. I must confess I did say to him if you were the captain of a spaceship and you were navigating your way round our planet, round Earth. Would you follow the Lugton to Kilburnie Road? So it's just a thought. <laughs> now, I'm not saying you wouldn't, but it's just a thought. Right. Uh, Barry Humphreys and 15 others, you've just shared. Thank you very much for that. Share, 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 share. And as I say, if you can get typing, are you watching Scotty McClue? Guys, those of you who have got Periscope on Twitter, go and follow me. Pardon me. Follow me on Twitter. Follow me on Periscope and share all the Periscope broadcasts because there's a lot of wonderful stuff there. Brian McNeil's online. Fake news on the NOS, quote BBC, Sandy Howden, there you are, good for you Sandy. Scotty, I sent you a wee friend request, says Greg Connor. Greg, no problem at all, I shall try and respond, my problem is, I have so many friend requests guys, that it's quite difficult to get round them all. Scotty, I picked my boy up for Govan tonight, and I tell him there had been sightings of red lights in the sky over Glasgow. It was on the radio. People are saying there's alien craft. He laughed at me. And it says see more, Ian. But I can't actually see more. Because if I click see more, your problem is I could lose the broadcast. It's as sensitive as that. Another quick wipe down. Whew. Warming here, for goodness sake. And the heat's off. I don't understand it. Ah, there we are. Oh, look at me. Looking like something off the Hesperus here. Get Brendan Rodgers in politics. Look what he's done for Celtic. Fantastic. Lol, I know, it's probably Chinese lanterns floating about. Well, I have looked on occasion when somebody's been saying, Scotty, what planet is that? Because I'm interested in my planets. Absolutely adore the moon. And adore Venus, of course. And then there's Ur Ur Uranus, I think the BBC are calling it now, aren't they? Uranus. All that sort of stuff, right? So there's all that. And I looked at I said, no, I think that's the, 
11 o'clock from Heathrow, that you're seeing. Uh, Scotty, what's legal right in Scotland? Have private companies to put parking fines in shopping centres? Have a good look at that, right? It's a wee while since I've looked at it, because Scotland got rid of the clamping. They weren't having that. You see, the Scots are wonderful. They don't like unfairness. They don't like greedy guts people. They don't like dodgy people in Scotland, even though there are a few, right? But only a handful. The bulk of Scots are lovely. As I say, I've only met one bad man in my whole career. One bad man in my whole career. So that's not uh, too bad, you know? And as well as being bad, he was also a bit daft. So there you go. Uh, the Tories are aliens. Um, says Ian Walker. <laughs> <laughs> you never know. It's very interesting. I remember interviewing David Icke. And David Icke is a fabulous character. He's absolutely fascinating. And of course, he thinks that people can be reptiles and, and what have you there. So it's very, very interesting. Scotty, I'm a smoker. Oh, wait a minute. Scotty, yes, what legal rights? So check that very, very carefully about the legal rights. I don't think you have to pay a fine if it's on private land. I don't think, but don't hold me to that one, guys. Check it out very, very carefully. Um, bright as the moon, lovely blue eyes, says Rab. Thank you, Rab. You are very, very kind. Uh, Angie says, you only have to get clamped now if your road tax is outdated. I know the six clamped cars in our street got towed away. Ah. Well, that's official if they haven't paid the road tax. We're talking about a private car park when people say, make sure you park in the bays or we'll fine you or something like that. I don't know that you really have to bother with that. The nation have come from Scythia, the greater through the Tuscan Sea and the Hercules Pillars, says Sandy. Well, Sandy, you're definitely um, a child of the African Rift Valley, so you're an African. I've seen the little green man, says Dave Muirhead. Absolutely. Give your hanky a good wash. Yeah, I think you're right on the parking, says George Mullen. Scotty, there's too much corruption today everywhere from the council uh, to the prices in the shops. So there you go. <laughs> I'm not reading that out. Uh, David Icke. No, David Icke was a marvellous guy, actually. Tremendous guy. So there we are. I'll just have to delete that comment, Ian. You can park in supermarket car, but you can... You can park in supermarket car parks, but no more than three hours. Why? You can't overnight in the supermarket. You know, I mean, how much are you going to spend in your supermarket? I see a lot of these people running about with packed trolleys, what have you. But you're not going to spend more than three hours in the supermarket. You know, there's something something a bit strange about that. Hello, says Blair Fraser. Hello, Blair. Dinky do from Scotty McClue, the world's top broadcaster, just for you. Fantastic. Now, this show is tremendous. Guys, we're on show 35 tonight. Amazing. Show 35 tonight. Uh, so, fantastic stuff. Uh, lots and lots of response from you. You've met plenty of draw droppers, the Scotties, says Greg Connor. Well, yes, one or two. There we are that haven't been thinking. And if they didn't drop the draws, they wouldn't have got into difficulties. If they'd kept their horn and their heat, nay, as we say. Excellent stuff. Now, my Skype is open if anybody wants to do a quick call. Uh, what, what's your opinion on having the Skype calls in the show? Some people say, oh, no, not the Skype, Scotty. Just leave the show as it is. It's great. Uh, or, why don't you take some calls, Scotty? That would be a lot better than just, uh, oh, I don't know. There's no, you can't please everybody all the time. I have to say that. You'll never please all the people all the time. What we're discussing tonight we're talking about with the north of England, right down to Birmingham, the Midlands. Now, remember, Scotty McClure is very well known in the Midlands, in Yorkshire, in the northeast of England, in the northwest of England. Scotty McClure is very, very well known, something of an icon. So, fantastic. Um, now, who else have we got here? Angie says you can park. I can't actually see that. So there we are. I'd rather hear you sing than hear a Skype call. <laughs> and you don't like my singing, do you? Oh, 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 oh. Wonderful stuff. Right there we are. Salt the virtue. Salt the virtue. 
uh, marvellous stuff. Right, um, your comments, I shall read out your comments, keep them coming, and uh, let's have another share. It's uh, just coming up to a quarter to 11 o'clock, and I have to push off at 11 o'clock sharp. Thank you so much for everything you're doing for this program, but you're also doing it for you, remember. So the sharing and sharing and sharing and the joining and the following and all that. Now, quick chat about social media. Scotty McClue is massive, absolutely massive across social media. Very, very big in Twitter. I mean, I, I made comments on a television program the other night. 30,000 people joined me, right? 30,000 in an hour. That's not bad. Remember, this is social media we're talking about. LinkedIn, if you'd like to join me on LinkedIn, if you're a business person and you're looking for exposure, feel free to join me on LinkedIn. I don't mind anybody having a wee swing on Scotty McClure's coattails. So there you go, not a problem. Also, if you uh, would like to follow me on Periscope, share the broadcast, join us there, great. Facebook Live, Follow me here on Facebook Live. Very, very important. Uh, hello, hello, hello to you. Fantastic stuff. So there we go. Who have we got here? Um, neither is your spelling, Shug. See, Nicola, they find you in Parkhead Car Park, says George Mullen. So there we are. Sandy, Google is not helping you with your education, says Shug McGinty. <laughs> Xavier go, Sandy. For, uh, for using Google in place of schooling. Uh, what do we got, says Greg. I think you're correct about that, Scotty, because a mind years back I attended a company for meetings and the lassie used to park in a car park was three hours max. The lassie never paid the company could. Greg, I can't go on to the, the uh, see more because the last time I did that, we lost the broadcast. It's so sensitive, this modern equipment. Car parks, as in shopping, is just a guy's way of having of a high-vis jacket uh, on. Don't pay it, says Rab Hill. There we go, Rab. Interesting. This is all opinion, remember, guys. SNP take control of Falkirk Council on Wednesday. Brilliant, says Shug McGinty. <clears throat> I would like to see, as I say, this is not me being party political, and I am not a party political animal, but I would like to see the SNP get 59 seats uh, and uh, and take control of Scotland because they've done a wonderful, wonderful job. Yes, there are challenges. Of course there are. But see when you hear about challenges in health and education, these are global throughout the world. There is a global shortage of nurses. There is a global shortage of teachers. There is a global shortage of highly skilled labour. All right, because we haven't been doing the training because conservative governments since Macmillan have not been spending properly on health and education. You see, they've been they've been pocketing the money, seeing how much they can cream off the top. These people. So there you go. Uh, get get the box out, Scotty says Greg Connor. Well, I do. Funny you should say that, Greg. And the lovely thing is, you're not a plant in the audience. I do actually have the box here, um, so I might manage to give you a wee tune on the box. I'll just tidy myself up there, folks. So, um, wait till we see. guys we tune for you if you get fed up my great great grandfather was the first domine in the island of Jura he was a schoolmaster in Jura and uh, in those days the domine 
When they saw the children were getting a wee bit fed up, we took a fiddle off the wall and give them a tune. So there you go. I think Skype's a good thing, says John Paul Preston. Hello from me. Answer. Uh, answer Bailey of Not at your fab, says Doreen Rennick. Dinky do. Fantastic stuff. So there we are. We've got the box out. Tremendous and uh, not a problem. Scotty, do you fancy we trip down the water this year in the Waverley? We do annual trips all the way through to Tinnabruch. Plenty of tunes on the accordion and guitar. You'd be so welcome. Andrew, that is such a lovely, lovely thing. I used to sit on uh, the committee of the uh, Sea Cadets, the executive committee, and I was young blood. I was only in my 20s. And the chairman of the committee was a wonderful, wonderful man called James Ferrier. And James ran Rankin and Blackmores, who put the engines in the Waverley. So James oversaw the building of these engines and the installation in the Waverley. I think the Waverley was built by A.J. Ingalls at Point House in Govan. Am I correct? And uh, my great favourites uh, with the steamers was the St. Columba, the three funnel art, and uh, the Duchess of Hamilton, of course, the big turbines, the Queen Mary, who's just returned to Scotland. I loved her. But I loved the wee McBrain's diesels, the Loch Fine and the Loch Nevis, with their electric, uh, electric uh, diesel electric units. Uh, Davy Paxman diesel electric units, fantastic. And of course, latterly, the Loch Fine and British Polar engines from Helen Street in Govan. And uh, I used to regularly go on the Loch Fine. She went from Guruk at 9.30 in the morning, three blasts for leaving harbour. <laughs> She went over to Dunoon, she went to Inellan, she went to Rothsey, she went to Tinnebruch, and then she went to Tarbot, and in the summer she went up to Ardrishig and back down. Wonderful! And then she was back at four o'clock in the afternoon. It was just tremendous. Captain McCallum, Diggy McCallum and Lackey Gillis, the pilot. I'll make a periscope account, Scotty, and hook you up, says John Paul Preston. Thank you, John. Hello from Doreen and wee Bailey of Morar. Oh, Doreen, fantastic. Morar, the sands of Morar, the silver sands of Morar. So, yes, Andrew MacDonald, a wee trip down the water. If I can spare um, a, a, enough time, I get to, my time gets taken up with this, that, and the next thing. What I also do, Andrew, behind the scenes, is I deal with very, very senior people who have media challenges. And I sort them out for them. I get some very big people out of very tight corners. So there you are. So there's a fair bit of that goes on. Ian Walker says, ask your carer to stay for another half hour, Scotty. Lol. She won't lose her carer's allowance. <laughs> Fantastic. Um, so there we are. Lovely to hear from you. Mora, give us five minutes for the box, says Greg Connor. No, you've had enough for the box. It's not everyone's cup of tea, but I absolutely adore it. And if you want a wonderful tune, uh, then Pipe Major John McClellan of Argyle, of, I think he'd be the 8th Argyles, and one of his great ones was Glen Calla Castle. Now, Glen Calla Castle, you were talking about Tinnabruch there, Andrew MacDonald. If you're up on the hill where the um, point is, I think there's a viewfinder, and you can look right up the Kyles of Butte, or right down the Kyles of Butte, depending on your interpretation. On a, on a summer's day, it's absolutely glorious. And just down below that was Glen Calla Castle. The army blew it up after the Second World War because it wasn't suitable to return to the family. I think the Navy had been in it during the Second World War, testing uh, submarines and torpedoes and divers and all the rest of it. But the pipe tune, Glen Calla Castle, very nice so there you go and uh, who have we got here um appreciate it says barry humphreys oh yes 19 others just shared your video yes i appreciate it very much barry what do you make of that ian brady getting more tv coverage since he died than the wee kiddies he killed and he wanted his ashes in glasgow angie 
I have had many, many, many a night, particularly in Manchester, in the northwest of England, discussing Brady and Hindley. And it is so harrowing, even now it's heartbreaking. But what was interesting is uh, we would get people, relatives of the children, would call the program and have a, a, a really, really sensible discussion. And um, I can remember a gentleman phoning one night in the North, a huge phone in. Remember, you've got um, 5.2 million people in the northwest of England, more than the population of Scotland. And um, it was it was still very raw, even these years ago. I was talking 1998, uh, 1999, 2000. And, of course, it's still raw for people. And every time I used to pass Saddleworth Moor, you couldn't help but have that shadow of what had happened there. So these two very bad and damaged people, uh, you know, psychopathic people and very bad people. But I got a caller one night and uh, a Ford uh, had stopped, little Ford Prefect had stopped uh, after the football match in, uh, in, in the early 60s. And this guy was walking home with his little brother. They were just children. I think they were about 12 and 9. And they were walking home. They'd been at the football match. And a little car stopped, little Ford stopped. And uh, it was Hindley and Beatty. And she swung her legs out of the car and was chatting to them and saying, I mean, we'll take you anywhere you want to go. We'll run you home and things like that. And he told us this story live on the phone in. And right across the northwest, you would have heard a pin drop. It was very, very harrowing, but it was incredible just how much it was there in everyone's psyche and still is. So I don't know how you would dispose of uh, of the remains of a person like that. Um, so there you go. I know that the um, guy who did the shooting at Dunblane. His funeral took place very quickly and very quietly. I think it was up in Dundee. Anyway, there we go. But it's very, very, it's a very, very uh, serious subject and it's 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 just heartrending to hear about it. So there we are. Uh, now, um, I remember you on Red Rose Radio. Uh, says David Muirhead, you are better than Stanage. Oh, I, I like James. I think he's an excellent, excellent broadcaster. I like James. Uh, super guy. Uh, so there we go. Uh, they couldn't enforce it, Scotty. This is the parking we're talking about. Give us a shout out, Scotty. Absolutely a shout out to Greg Morrison. Thank you do. Greg, what are you on? Good man, Scotty, says Greg Connor. Scotty, the Roman Ninth Legion was last seen in a pub in Dundee. Mystery solved. Your well, Pontius Pilate was from Fortingall in Perthshire, I'm pretty sure. And the um, Royal Scots, were they not known as Pontius Pilate's regiment? Uh, Give it Laldi, says Rab Hill. Hello, Clyde Free Wee Bailey at Moorer Place. Oh, dinky do, Doreen. How lovely to hear from you. I was thinking of the Silver Sands of Moorer when you were talking earlier. Fantastic. John Paul Preston. SNP will win massively this general election. The Tories haven't got a chance in hell. Even they know to keep spouting their propaganda. Yes, and there is a lot of propaganda. What I would say to all of you folks in the run-up to the general election, all your newspapers, all your radio, all your television, have a sack of salt beside you. Do not believe what you hear until you personally have processed all that. Right? So, for, I mean, the other night I couldn't believe what I was hearing from uh, from Mrs. May, you know, about how she's wanting a, a society that's... Uh, I just thought, just stop. I wanted to go, stop. Now, think about what you're saying, because this is going to get flung back at you. So, there we are. That sort of stuff. So do be very careful. Some of the, the rags that you see in the supermarket, the headlines, um, you know, don't believe any of that until you have processed it. If you're unsure, come on and support Scotty McClue because I'll give you the truth. 
I'll give you the facts. All right? Um, I thought I'd seen you in a flute band, Scotty. No, I don't think you'll have seen me in a flute band. Have you ever caught your tie in your squeeze box, Susanna Moyes? Um, not my tie, but, uh, but very nearly tonight. Uh, it's about time the government sorted the homeless out. Yes, we shouldn't have homeless. We shouldn't have children starving. And yet, there's a government saying they're going to take the food out of our children's mouths. They're going to take away their wee school meals. Don't get me started. Uh, I'm doing a funny face. That reminds me after that tune. I've got a funeral to go to, says George Mullen. <laughs> Thanks, George. Very good. Uh, I was telling somebody recently, I was talking to somebody on the phone about finance, and she said, how long are you thinking working, Mr. McClure? I said, up until lunchtime on the day of my funeral. Then I'll have to go and get changed, get shifted, because there might be some people coming, maybe not many. And uh, she laughed with quite a good call after that. The Maggie, says Ian Walker, yes. Um, a wee share for you, Scotty, says Greg. Absolutely. Guys, I'm going to have to dash. Can we have one massive share? George Mullen, one was happy birthday. I remember your nights on Q96 FM while driving my bus. You gave my passengers great entertainment in your show at 10 p.m., says Eddie Smith. Yes. Uh, now, Q96, uh, it's not Q96, but 96.7. That frequency has uh, just been taken over. The franchise has been awarded to a new group. So who knows? They might go for a Scotty McClure phone in. Comment was before you got the box out, Scotty. Scotty, look up Andy Stewart. He was great at accents. Yes, the rumour, absolutely. The rumour and uh, all the different accents. Um, it spread along Aberdeen. They shouted it in Leith and that sort of stuff. And uh, the town, the, 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 the tone got more discreet when it went up Leith Walk and along Princess Street. Uh, and, and then it, when it got to the Western Highlands, they'd forgotten what it was. Andy Stewart is a great guy. I've worked with Andy Stewart. You should go and pop idols, says Dave Muirhead. Scotty, my nephew's first mate on the Waverley. When I have a date for the trip, I'll let you know, Andrew McDonald. Thank you, Andrew. Fantastic stuff. Scotty, do you ever hear from Bob McLennan? Not a peep, not a word. Don't know what happened to him, to him, to we Bob. See when you're playing that accordion, how can't we see it? Plus, play the dueling banjos, says Rab. What do you mean, how can't you see it, Rab? Let me give you a look. There is the accordion. <laughs> I remember the late great Jim Shan, Jimmy Shan, and somebody came down, they knocked his dressing room door and they accused him of miming. And he said, Why do you say that? Wonderful, wonderful man. And they said, um, Because your bellows weren't moving. And he picked up the box and he showed them what's called economy of the bellows. So there you are. Uh, so you've, you've just seen it. Okay, so you can shut your giggy. I say, I was at Castle Sweden last week, another part of Scotland that's great. Yes, my family come from around there, Achnamara and Castle Sweden. And, of course, uh, the great Poltalochi State and all that. Wonderful, wonderful. A conversation starter. And so many of you. Tremendous. Millionaires like Ian Duncan Smith need to keep up the lifestyle. Take care, mates, says Rab Hill. Debate causes division. How a person votes should be private. Lynn Kay. Nobody's telling us how they vote on here. Debate doesn't cause division. This is actually another rumour that's been put about that independence and the independence debate is divisive. It's actually not. Nothing has brought Scotland and the Scots closer together than the fact that they may actually have their own self-determination. When people get uh, get wise. Uh, so there you go. Uh, debate doesn't cause division, Lynn, especially. I mean, tonight, as I say, what uh, what I would like to have seen Ruth Davidson do was just appall apologize. Just absolutely apologize. Um, get on national radio, Scott, even if it's dab. We need your voice in Sassnock land, says Joshua Langford. And um, Albion Rovers, Christian Hope sending me. If you go on the Waverley... Do they have a plank in case you start to sing? Give it some. I liked him, Scotty. Jimmy Shen, great guy, says Greg. I'm only in my 30s. I love all that stuff. Debate will seal our fate. 
Guys, so many of you are watching, but I'm going to have to dash. Did Queenie ever get on to you in www.q96.net? Barry Humphreys, if you go on to Scotty McClure's YouTube, uh, you will see Queenie on there. So get on to the YouTube, uh, Scotty McClure's YouTube channel. Just Google it and subscribe. Get every single one of you subscribe. Scotty, I had a buzz of laughter to the phone-in days, you and the lovable lassie. Absolutely. Good night, my man. Light suit, says Ian Walker. Light suit, guys. We've got a massive audience watching, and I say to you, I love you all. Mwah. Dinky doo. I'm now going to sing. Are you ready? Goodbye, everybody. Goodbye. Take care, everybody, as you go. Goodbye, everybody. Of winter, zain, au revoir. And a cheerio. Thanks, my darlings, for watching. Have a fabulous week. Share everything, Scotty McClue. Go and go fundme.com forward slash Scotty hyphen McClue. And I send you lots and lots of love. Tell everybody about this wonderful program. Share, share, share. And we will catch up next week at the same time, God willing, weather permitting. Until then, this is Scotty McClue saying, Dinky doo to you. See you, loves. Scotty McClure has left the building. Oh!